Welcome here to the Ride Along channel on a stunning day out here in Alpe d'Huez, where today's short video is going to give you a few little hints and tips about what I carry with me in my pack for a day's filming. Not just off-piste and free ride, I'm going to put away the safety gear that's all at the front just here, my transceiver, my probe, my shovel, all of the usual first aid kit and that kind of stuff. That's all to one side for now. I'm talking filming in the snow as faff free as possible and carrying as little as possible to get the best possible shots. Here we go. Now pretty much everything you see, not just in this video, but in most of the channel is filmed on Insta360. And the most recent one at the moment is this, the X3. Uh, now I've got a few little tricks and things I've got in my bags just to make this as easy as possible and as quick as possible to get these great shots, such as preloading some of the mounts, possibly even carrying a double mount if they're small and light, just to make it easier to make the transitions. Because let's be honest, no one likes the faff of waiting around for someone to get their camera ready, to get the attachment on, to do whatever it needs to do. When the snow is waiting, you just want to go and ride. So the first thing I've got in my hands just here is the unicorn mount. Now what I've done is I preload this with the clamp down at the bottom, ready with that nice carbon lightweight extension that sticks out the front. And as you can see the camera I've mounted, so the lenses are up and down rather than side to side. Because let's be honest, most of the view is going to be looking forwards slightly rather than across to my left or right. What I mean by preloading is this mount is already here and this clamp on the side is as tight as I can possibly get it because once it's attached to the helmet, there's quite a long lever with all the weight of the camera at the front there. And if this clamp isn't tight enough, it can start to drop while you're filming. It's super easy to attach the helmet. Once you've got one of the little sticky mounts preloaded on there, all you have to do is clip and go. Simple as that. And I try to line it up so it's pretty much on the edge of my eye line while I'm about to go skiing. You can see where I've got it mounted just there. I can just see it in front of my face just here which means when you get shots like this that you can see on screen, it's not in the way, but it's as POV, as real life as I can get it. But also you get that great shot looking back at the skier while you're going as well. Now the next little mount I'm going to pull out the bag is the Mega Extension Selfie Stick. As you can see, it's quite small, quite lightweight, and if you're carrying a safety pack like I've got just here, uh, it's about the same sort of size as your probe. So it fits quite nicely in the pack. You don't even notice it's there. And the cool thing is despite its small size, when you start to extend, this thing goes three meters long. Being a 360 camera, of course, you just blindly follow your friends. Don't need to worry at all about what you're filming, just about where you're skiing or snowboarding. The camera catches everything in sight. And then afterwards, I tend to use the deep track mode, which just selects your skier, your snowboarder, follows them down the mountain. Super easy AI to edit. You haven't got to do anything at all. Lightweight, fits in your pack. The mega pole, I love to ride with. It's great fun. And yes, it kind of looks like you're going fishing while skiing down the hill, but I can get by with that for the sake of not having to fly a drone or worry about where exactly that camera is going around you. Now it's all very well being able to film all these amazing shots, but the ease of the app is what makes these cameras so amazing. You could just use the complete auto settings. That's what you're seeing on screen just now. This was a pretty amazing run from a day or two ago. All I've done is press auto after filming up the selfie stick out the front and all this stuff that's going on right now just looks amazing. The other option, select the clip you want to edit, find roughly where things start to look good and where the action happens. I'm going to say it's about there. And all I'm going to do is click the little dot just above my head there and it starts to track me. There you go, it's called deep tracking. Just about make it out of the shadow, I'm holding the selfie stick with my right hand there. Yellow little glow is following me as I start to ski. I'm doing nothing else right now. I'm not touching the camera, I'm not touching the, the phone or anything. It's just doing its thing. Runs through the whole shot as far as you want to go. Once you're happy that that's enough of the good action happened, stop tracking, trim to the good bit. So where did it start? Somewhere about there, just as the 
crew are behind me, trim to the end bit, which is about there, export, and it's done. It's ready to go on your Instagram, on your TikToks, whatever you fancy doing with it. You can mess around with it as well, I can make it portrait like you would have on, on Instagram feeds and stuff like that. Or you can flick it to landscape if you want to upload it directly to YouTube or anything else. Super easy, and I think this whole thing I've just talked through now took about a minute or two. Saved to my phone, ready to go. The final version looks like this. So simple, genuinely done on the chairlift, and I'm not even a quarter of the way to the top right now. The next little mount, super small, fits on the top of the pack. That's the classic helmet mount just there, the tiny little point of view one. So it's super small, easy to fit into your pack, and very quick and easy just to clip onto the helmet and go. Just like with the unicorn mount, I tried to get the lenses pointing up and down to get the best possible shot looking forwards. I also have it sticking quite a long way forwards rather than straight up in the air, as you can see. And that allows me to get my hands, my skis, my body in the shot just a little bit more than if I had it sticking up in the air, looking a little bit like a Teletubby. This looks a much better view, I think, when you're riding. Do be aware, when you've got the unicorn mount or the helmet mounts on here, though, when that safety bar comes down on the chairlift, you do need to duck out the way a little bit. It's easy to forget they're there dong and then scratch the camera as it comes back down so take care with that one The next little mount I'm going to show you, I've actually taken out of its little pouch here that lives in my bag most of the time because it attaches to the bag. This is the Insta360 bag mount that gives you that sort of Grand Theft Auto view whilst you're skiing. Rock solid. As soon as you're attached, you've got your bag straps done up nice and tight. You can really start throwing that bag around. It doesn't affect it at all. And you get that really cool sort of third person mini drone view following out behind you. Very easy to set up, completely generic for every bag that's got two straps, which is pretty much everything you're going to be skiing with. Lock it on and off you go. It's super adjustable as well. You can swing it up or down, swing it over a shoulder, and you can even double the length of the pole. If you decide you want to get a slightly further away view, it actually matches with the unicorn extension. You can go double length on the skiing. It does become a little bit of a swing weight when you're doing that at double length, but it still works pretty well. The next little extension is a classic one, the selfie stick. Super small, fits pretty much in most of your ski jacket pockets, but still extends to just over a metre. Now, if you're snowboarding, of course, you've got free hands. It's very easy to hold in front of you or behind you, however you like. With skiing, you could use a few different pole mounts I'm going to show you in just a second. But actually what I've decided is quite a lot of the time I find myself just holding it like this. And that way mid shots I can flow it round, I can change the angle, I can do what I like. So you don't always have to have a pole mount if you trust yourself just holding it like this. That smaller selfie stick I find as well is super useful just to stab in the snow and do exactly what I'm filming on right now 
Right now, the camera is being filmed on the selfie stick stabbed into the snow, just like this one. The other pole mount, maybe you've spotted, this is the new one from Insta360. This is about as good as ski poles can get. Rock solid. All you have to do is screw in the extendable selfie stick into the bottom of it, and you're good to go. The view like this, I think, looks wicked from behind you while you're skiing along. Gives you a really good view. Just be careful not to drop the camera into the snow behind you or get flicked from snow coming up behind you. And it's pretty quick and pretty easy just to spin the pole mount around so you can then do kind of like what I was showing you just then, holding that camera out in front of you, but locked in position with no need to worry about holding it or falling over. This is the Insta360 pole mount, highly recommended. At this point, midway through the video, I should mention all of the Planks clothing I'm wearing just now, the Sun God goggles, the ski poles from Grass Sticks just here made from real bamboo, the white dot skis just there, and all of the cameras and attachments and mounts and everything being mentioned is detailed in the description. Some of them have got affiliate links, some of them have got some discount codes, you can save a bit of money, or even just to send a little bit back my way while you're buying your gear anyway would be much, much appreciated. Please use those links in there and that will keep me making videos and keep me stoked to be out here in the mountains shooting for you guys. Final little tip, if you're going to be using your Insta 360s out and about in the snow, is carry a spare battery or even two with you. I keep these deliberately on my inside pocket here, nice and warm, nice and close to my body, just to make sure that the cold doesn't affect the battery life and keeps them going for as long as possible. There's nothing worse than standing at the top of your favourite run about to drop in, bleep, 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 the battery's gone. No proof means it never happened. Hopefully this short video has given you a few little ideas of how you can best utilize your Insta360 while skiing and snowboarding around the mountain. Let me know what you think of these ideas in the comments down below. Whack that little subscribe button and stay tuned for loads of other tips about not just using your cameras, but skiing techniques in general on and off piste. And if you're coming to join me here in Out to Airs, don't forget I'm still available for off-piste guiding, for tuition, for lessons, both skiing and snowboarding at all levels. All the information is in the description just below this video now. I will see you later on the channel. It's time to go for a bit of a ski, get some more of these shots. See you later.